Middlehurst is a high country station on the inland Kaikouras. It experiences extreme weather conditions during the year. Sue and Willie MacDonald bought the property in 1998. Excited about the potential of its naturally fertile soils, the good balance of both north and south facing country and the quality of merino sheep being run there. We arrived here in April 1998. I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to have a go at farming on our own account. We came in a pretty fragile time really. It was the end of a quite a major drought. The uh, place was badly infested still with rabbits. Um, Horatium, broom, there was plenty of negatives, but there was also some positives. Um, we were lucky that the um, Khaleesi virus arrived about the same time as we did and did a fantastic job for 10 years. The strengths of the property definitely lie in the soils, very fertile, low in sulphur, a lot of sunny country. Uh, the Arwa tree itself is uh, well known for good stock health and this place is no exception. Weaknesses are the rabbits and they will always be an issue in this country. Horatium, the invasion of the Horatium flatweed with brooms well. We've got a very short growing period, late springs. We haven't had really had any autumns in the last four or five years. Um, cold winters, cold long winters, yeah, not a great deal of rain often. At least we've been rewarded for the slog. It's been really rewarding what we've achieved so far. When we took over the property here, it was running just on 5,000 sheep made up of 1,800 ewes, 1,700 weathers and about 1,600 hoggets. Due to the nature of the country and the type of the sheep, we made a pretty quick decision to um, to get rid of the weather flock and which enabled us um, to, to spell some pretty fragile country that we felt was pretty important at that stage and also to increase our ewe flock dramatically. We felt that uh, basically the country was probably too good to run weathers on. Generally the sheep were of great make and shape and fertility and they were survivors in this environment but they lacked a bit of wool quality. The development's made a huge difference. I mean, in basic terms, it's more than doubled our stock units from five and a half thousand to around 12,000 on this property. So, yeah, huge difference. But uh, my real concern at the moment is the price of fertiliser and the application of it and what we're going to do in the medium term to maintain. Yeah, meat's a big part of what we're trying to achieve here, especially with the semen that we will be using across these ewes. Um, it's a big part of our income now, the um, the meat side of it. We were looking for genetics that would enhance the, the ewe base that we had and give us a better fibre on that carcass, which traditionally had been relatively hard to do because often to fine up sheep you, you tended to go smaller. Uh, so we yeah, did quite a bit of research with the help of different people and managed to come onto some genetics that we then implemented and have continued to use. We source our genetics mainly from a stud in Victoria called Waterloo Park, stud master being John Carter, who's uh, been very good with us right from the beginning. Obviously, he's had a lot of satisfaction out of the breeding results that we've managed to achieve here. So it's been a two-way thing, really. Firstly, we imported two, two live rams and, and used them just in a natural mating and then realised that we were going to be here for a long time to uh, get much genetic gain out of that. So we followed the next uh, three years with um, major cervical AI programs with 3,000 ewes in the program and um, over, run over an 18-day natural cycle, so with teasers drafting night and morning and AIing the same. That was, um, yeah, it was a lot of work, but it was very, very effective, very effective and lifted us up to a, to a level um, very quickly. We can winter hoggets here on pretty ordinary save sunny hill country very cheaply. I mean, wintering costs are a huge thing that we need to be aware of in today's farming economy. And we have the ability to finish them on a block in North Canterbury. And they have an amazing ability with competitory growth after they've shorn to they can just cruise along at a pretty flat level autumn through winter and get the wool off them, get them onto good feed, and you can have tremendous growth rates. Out of sort of four and a half thousand, five thousand merino lambs that we will um, produce in the coming sp spring, um, only one thousand of those will be retained for for replacements. So the balance three three and a half 
to 4,000 will be killed. We want to grow a heavy cutting fleece on a very plain bodied sheep that's easy care, easy to shear, and the wool will fit into an icebreaker contract. It's become a lot simpler. Previous to contracting to icebreaker, this shed was uh, maximum fleeces through it a day was 800, and it, it wasn't working very well. It was too tight, too, too many people, and there was a lot of fleeces ended up on the floor waiting to be processed. Now, now with skirting them a lot less, they have a very light skirt and into the bin. Um, yeah, the fleeces are we're getting around to 1,200 through a day. They want us to leave a lot of the skirting on the fleece rather than it being taken off and then blended later on. They want it left on the fleece. To risk proof this property here, we in 2000 we bought a property in North Canterbury, specifically really to finish our merino hoggets. Obviously that's only a three month period so it has greater uses than that. But it gives us that flexibility with cattle as well. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't like to be farming here with the weather conditions of the last few years and, and have nowhere to go with stock when um, when things get dry and a bit tight. Otherwise, you put yourself as a forced seller in, into a very weak business position. This time last year, we bought another block uh, in Havelock, head of the Polaris Sound. It's all cattle, no, no sheep go down there, and it's just further covering us for, for dry spells. Uh, it, either in North Canterbury or, or here. And it's proving some, once again, it's got some very good soils on it. And um, yeah. The sheep side of the, the business is, is probably where we put a lot of our focus, but um, the, the cattle side's very important, both from a grazing management point of view here and a, and a spread of income. Um, so that's equally as important. I dare say maybe there's a wee bit more passion involved in the sheep for some reason. Um, <laughs> I think you get that when you have um, wool and um, a female species. But it's, um, yeah, we get a lot of enjoyment out of that. But mm. yeah, we just need to consolidate really and um, hang on to what we've got. We'll be, um, we'll, we'll be going well. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.